The digital capture process does tend to soften photos a bit. So we will often sharpen our photos and you can do that at more than one point in your workflow. You can sharpen upon capture using the sliders in the detail panel in Lightroom's develop module. Commonly we would sharpen again when they output a photo and that's called output sharpening. But here today we're talking about capture sharpening here in the detail panel in the develop module. Now the first thing to remember about sharpening is that you can't evaluate the sharpness of an image or the effects of the sharpening unless you are zoomed into at least one to one view or 100%. Now you can do that in the navigator panel here at one to one or we can just click once in the image. And I'll just drag just to try and find somewhere where we've got a little bit of a contrast edge. And just to exaggerate it a little bit because of the screen resolution, what I'll do is I'll go up to two to one, just so we can see a little bit of detail on your monitor. Now, okay, so what is sharpening? Well, the bottom line is it's an illusion. If an image is too blurry, it generally can't be fixed with current technology. However, we can, if an image is a little soft, we can give it some visual pop with a little bit of sharpening. Now when Lightroom is sharpening a photo, it looks for edges. It looks for where there are bright pixels next to dark pixels. And then it brightens the bright pixels and darkens the dark pixels at the edges. Now this increase in contrast gives the illusion of sharpening. Now before I sharpen a photo, I would normally do some noise reduction. Now I talk more about that in the noise reduction video. But in this case, I'm not going to do any noise reduction to better illustrate for you the effects the sharpening is actually going to have. So for now, I'm just going to come over to the noise reduction sliders here. And I'm going to make sure that they're both at zero, both the luminance and the color. Now, something I love about Lightroom is the way it tries to help us visually. For example, if I move the amount slider, you can see that something's happening, but it's not always too clear. But now if I hold the Alt key down and I click on the slider, I get a black and white preview and it removes the distraction of color. And it just gives me a little bit better view on actually what is actually happening without distraction. Now the same with the radius slider. I hold the Alt key down, drag the radius slider. You can actually see those halos forming now in real time. So you can actually see the lighter areas getting lighter and the darker areas getting darker. Now if I have a lot of sharpening, and I hold the Alt key down and drag the detail slider. You can see at a low detail, I'm not really bringing a lot of the detail back. But as I slide that over, you can see I'm bringing more and more of the detail back. So it gives you a really good visual idea on what the sharpening is actually doing. And then my personal favorite is the last one is masking. And this is for protecting areas like the sky, which at the moment we have over sharpened that sky. We've got lots of artifacts, we've got lots of edges. And now if I hold the Alt key down again and click and drag, you see it starts off at white and then I get a mask forming. And anywhere that's black is not sharpened. Anywhere that's white is being sharpened. So you can see here now that I've eliminated all the sharpening in the sky and I'm just sharpening where the detail is. That's magic. Okay, but let's have a go at some sharpening then. Now the amount slider and the radius slider work together. What the amount slider does is control the brightness and darkness of the pixels at them sharpened edges. And we call these the sharpening halos. Now the radius slider determines how wide those sharpening halos are. So here we are, we're zoomed into one to one. Well, we're zoomed into actually two to one. And we can do that from the navigator panel or just by clicking on the image. And we've dragged to an area where we can see some contrast at this edge. Now I'm going to drag the amount slider right over, right up to 150, just to show you some of these halos happening. 
and you can really see these halos just here we've got some light areas here and we've got some dark areas here now if I take the radius slider over as well right over there you can see these halos now appearing quite dramatically here you can see a really dark edge and next to it we've got a really really light halo edge and the same on this side and this is what's perceived as sharpening this contrast but obviously this level doesn't look good now I'd normally keep my radius slider fairly low probably less than one so when I drag it over you'll see that the these halos actually reduce and I'm going to do the same with the amount slider I'm going to drag that over and you can see that the edge goes from blurry to a little bit sharper just that edge I think that looks good because I want these edge details to look sharp but I don't want to see any of these sharpening halos now there are really no formulas for these sliders the settings you choose will be different for each image now there are two more sliders here the detail slider and the masking slider now if I drag the detail slider over to the right you can see that I'm bringing back some of the detail on them edges so if I drag it this way it'll soften it a little bit so what that's trying to do is bring back a little bit of detail on those edges so probably that's a bit far so I'll bring that back a little bit now the amount of detail for each image varies with every image so when you're working on a portrait for example you might not want to bring out all the detail in a subject's skin so for that you'd probably have a fairly low detail however if you're working with a building uh, something with some nice lines in it and architectural structures you might want a high detail so I think for this image we're going to probably want quite a high detail to try and give us some nice contrast edges now if you notice that the sharpening we've done and this increase in detail has brought back a little bit of noise in the sky now just in case you can't see that I'll just accentuate it a little bit so you I just push that about slider up a little bit you can see that we're actually sharpening quite dramatically all, all the artifacts that's in this clear sky now I can combat this by using the masking slider and this will protect large open areas like the sky from sharpening now to show you what this slider does I'm going to hold down the alt key and drag the masking slider now you can see what I get is a black and white mask now the black areas of the mask are protecting those areas from sharpening so if I keep dragging over anywhere that's black now does not get sharpened which is mainly the sky anywhere that's white or grey does get sharpened so I can pull this over until I feel that I've got all that sky completely black and then I can let go and you can see that the sky is now nice and smooth now there's still obviously a little bit too much sharpening going on here so I'm just going to drop that sharpening down to take that halo away to somewhere like that okay so I'll just go back to fit on screen view so that's how to use the sharpening sliders in the detail panel for capture and creative sharpening during your workflow